Malachi is radiating new signals each day to show us that he does not have the will to, do, to stand against the demands of the mullahs ruling Iran. And he cannot, I suppose he dare not, um, uh, ameliorate his animosity towards the residents of Camp Ashraf for that reason. Today, we know that any memorandum of understanding that he puts his hand to with the international community about Ashraf, he then has to prove to the mullahs by his perverse actions, he has shown that his signature is never intended as something, as a substantive expression of goodwill or a commitment to do what is honourable. The international community must now draw its own conclusions. There has to be, uh, there has been, so far, from the international community, too much equivocation. It will not obtain a positive result with Maliki to resolve the Ashraf crisis unless the United Nations sends them a clear message and they must act now, decisively. Only if the United Nations from this platform today can pick up that message and meet its obligations will uh, we have any hope that the people of Camp Ashraf will not suffer a great deal more than they have to date Let, let me concentrate on that point. Today we need and expect the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees to tell, and in unequivocal terms, Nouri al-Maliki that he cannot use the pretext of Iraqi sovereignty to bully us. That he cannot imprison 3,400 defenseless asylum seekers. That the United Nations... Uh, Human Rights Commission, Commission for Human Rights, has recognized those rights associated with the clearly declared status of Camp Ashraf residents. Nouri al-Maliki has no justification for trampling on their rights, for preventing them from taking their legal assets or for carrying out illegal action against them in the name of Iraqi sovereignty. It is Nouri al-Maliki, not the residents of Camp Ashraf, or the presence of the residents of Camp Ashraf, who demeans that sovereignty by his, Nouri al-Maliki's, duplicity. So, if I read what my colleagues have said here today, we need, we demand that the High Commissioner tell al-Maliki that the United Nations cannot tolerate any deliberate delays in carrying out the UNCHR process. Until Camp Liberty is ready and adequate, the UNCHR must insist on their um, uh, international obligations to uh, bring part of Camp Ashraf under its control and start interviewing the residents to be sent to third, third countries. This assurance we expect to hear from the High Commissioner, not next week, not tomorrow, but right now, today. I, I, look, I look for my U, US, United States colleagues 
on the platform to bend Mrs. Clinton's ear so that she does listen and so that she takes appropriate, I was going to say timely, it's now untimely, but at least let her take action now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to that end, I promise that the British Parliamentary Committee for Iranian Freedom is fully dedicated and committed. And one other thing, David Phillips, you volunteered general to go to Camp Ashraf. If you can persuade Mrs. Clinton and you want to internationalize it, I'll come with you. Merci beaucoup, euh, Lord Maguini. Merci beaucoup pour votre très belle intervention. Je passe la parole à un directeur euh, adjoint de la CIA aux États-Unis, M. John Sano.